Hi. My name is Jameson. I was wandering around aimlessly, and I saw you, so I thought I would ask if you had read Stephen Hawking's new book, The Grand Design? Yes. I have read it. I found it very philosophical and based on theories that could not be proved empirically. But what about the Large Hadron Collider? They have found all these new particles. They found one just yesterday. Science is a process by which people create theories and then must demonstrate that they work through empirical analysis. But they just found a new particle. What does this particle do, exactly? It is another neutrino, and it does the things that the others could not do, because they looked at the equations and they were not matching, so they came up with another particle. That seems like another theory to me. If the general assumptions of the theory are found to be incorrect, it would seem to be more logical to abandon the theory and start again from something else. But then it wouldn't work with string theory. And string theory is definitely true. Again, string theory is a theory. It has not been proven to be true. Which string theory are you referring to, specifically? The one where there are 11 dimensions, because there were 10 dimensions, but the math didn't work, so they, um, um, added another variable, so that it worked, so it is better now. Again, that is another example of where the base theory appears to be wrong. Adding another variable only makes the equations more complicated, and thereby the evidence to prove the theory to be valid. But they had to have 11 dimensions or Feynman's quantum electrodynamics would not work. And we know that is true because of the inferometer experiment with a double slit. Again, quantum electrodynamics is still a theory. Granted, its approach is useful to predict everyday situations, but if the base theory is flawed, inventing an imaginary cause of the results is not science. But quantum electrodynamics is based on Einstein's relativity. So it must be true. Why can't you see it? The theory of special relativity is still also a theory. But they use relativity to calculate GPS corrections for satellites. The equations work, so therefore light must not have mass. It is obvious. Even if the equations predict behavior, assuming the description of the behavior to be correct is not science. There have been experiments showing that light exerts pressure on objects, that light interacts with mass such as eating it up. It would appear to me to be more likely that light is simply a mass-containing particle that moves through a medium, thereby having characteristics that exhibit wave-resembling properties. But light bends around objects? How do you explain that? Most mass-containing particles tend to bend around objects. It is called an orbit. It is due to gravity. But then there would not be space-time and we couldn't travel back in time and the aliens couldn't talk to us. Although I'm a fan of modern science fiction, there does not appear to be a need to have a concept of space-time. But Einstein was smart. My professors in college told me that he was smart. It must be true. He was declared to be the greatest scientist of the 20th century. So he is right. Somehow, I find that aiding in the creation of the atomic bomb does not deserve recognition from the scientific community. But it's the atom bomb and it's shaped like a mushroom. Isn't that cool? No. No, it is not. I think I have better things to do than talk to you. Goodbye.